What's up everybody? I'm Mr. Fan. Thank you for joining me. Today I want to go over all my camera gear that I'm going to be taking with me on my Appalachian Trail through hike. I'm starting early to mid-February, somewhere around February 15th. And I'm going to go into a little bit how I edit video while I'm on trail. So yeah, stick around. Let's get into it. Alrighty then, so I guess we'll start out with my, my actual camera. Well, one of them. <laughs> I will be taking the Sony A6400. It's a Sony mirrorless APC, APS-C camera. It's 24 megapixels and it works pretty daggone awesome. It works pretty good in low light if you have a good lens on it. The only bad things about it is the battery life and it does not have in-body stabilization which kind of sucks <laughs> eventually i want to upgrade my body and get one that has the bigger z battery from sony and it has abs but i'm kind of waiting for them to do like the like an upgrade to the sony a6600 so well eventually i might upgrade into something else but my main lens that I will have on that the same lens I had last year that I broke a follower of mine hit me up whenever they seen I broke my other one and basically said they had one they could let me have for cheap that was awesome it's a little bit beat up but it still works perfectly that is the Sony 18 to 135 3.5 to 5.6 and the bad thing about this lens, it is terrible in low light because your f-stop, the, the brightest or the wide openness it will go is 3.5. To give y'all an example, I got that sitting on 1.8 right now and that gives you the background separation and you're able to do night photography and all kinds of stuff because you have a, the more light you let in, the better the lens is at low light. But the bad thing about this, it's a variable aperture. It starts out at 3.5, but as soon as you move up, it goes to 4, then 4.5, 5, and then 5.6 at 135 millimeters. But it has an uh, optical steady shot, and it has an autofocus, manual focus switch. I was wanting to upgrade my lens, but with me starting in February instead of April, I just didn't have the time the time to do it and the money to actually do it and still start at this time of the year. So I'm just sticking with basically the lens I carried last year and we'll just roll with it. Now I am taking another lens and that is the one I'm filming on right now. That is the Sigma 30mm 1.4. So this will be my portrait lens and it will be my low light lens and astrophotography lens. It's a little tight for astro, but I can make it work. Alright, and on the top of that, and on the end of that, I have a Hoya variable ND filter. I'll be using that filter on both lenses. I'm only carrying one, I'll switch it out as I go. But basically, an ND filter is sunglasses for your lens. I'll show you right here. But, basically, without getting too technical, I shoot everything in 24 frames per second. If I wanna have that smooth, lifelike motion blur, I have to have my shutter double my frame rate, which would make it 1 50th of a second. If you try to do that and you don't have an ND filter on there in broad daylight, it's going to completely blow out. You won't be able to see you or anything else. If you want to shoot in anywhere from 1.4 to like 3.5 or 4, you're going to have to have an ND to shoot, to shoot video like that. <laughs> but I'm only carrying one and I just have a step up ring on, side, on the on that lens to make it to where I can use the ND filter for this on that, on that lens. 
All right, so for my other camera, yes, I'm taking two lenses and another camera. <laughs> is the GoPro Hero 9 with a little Luan Yuanzi or something like that little tripod. All right, so basically the GoPro is only for places I need stabilization. <laughs> because this camera, it's a pain in the butt when it comes to stable, stabilization and trying to make it stable in post. So I'm carrying the GoPro because let's face it, it's hard to beat a GoPro stabilization. And so this is gonna be for any time I'm walking with a camera, like doing walking shots or anything like that. Pretty much a 90, 90 Probably about 85% of my B-roll is going to be done with this GoPro. And I'm carrying a little extra tripod for it. Because if I want to do a time lapse or anything like that, I'll be able to. And then I would still be able to have my other one for my camera if I want to have it set up doing something else. This little tripod don't weigh hardly anything. So, it works. For my camera tripod, I have the Manfrotto Pixie Evo with a little Arca Swiss clamp on it. That just makes it where I'm able to take my camera, sit it down on it. I have a little plate on the camera on the bottom of it, and then I just turn it. And then it will stay put and not fall off. This is just makes it quick and easy instead of having to put my camera on there and then screw it in the whole time. For carrying my camera, I'll be using the Z Packs camera pack. Yes, I used it all on my hikes last year, and I absolutely love this thing. But I will keep uh, my Sony in here with one of the lenses, the GoPro, and an extra battery, and so on. All right, so now let's get into the accessories. I have a little blower. This helps me get dust off of my camera. The sensor. Most of the time you can get stuff off your sensor. Sis, yeah. Sensor with just this. Just turning your camera upside down with the sensor exposed and just blowing it. A lot of times that will work. But if I'm sure y'all seen in some of my videos sometime or another. I have a little dust you can get if you have dust on your sensor it will come through on the video like a little black spot here a little spot here a little spot there a little bit spot there that's ruined a bunch of shots for me in the past before I started carrying this stuff my other thing to clean my sensor if I have to is some sensor swaps and some sensor cleaning solution basically all I do is open one of these up, try to be in somewhere enclosed, preferably inside, but if not, you just do what you can. But you open this up, pull it out, and you take one spray and spray the one side of this. It's like a little triangle, yeah, a little triangle, swab kind of thing. You spray it, swipe once, then you turn that around, swipe another way. And it works awesome. But I will not carry a camera on trail anymore without carrying some of these. Even if I wasn't carrying a, a different lens, all Sony cameras, except for maybe the newer, newer ones like the A7 IV and the A1 and everything that has where you can shut this, uh, close up the shutter whenever you take the lens off. If you don't have that, and you're carrying a Sony camera, it's smart to carry these because they're known to get dust on the sensor even if you don't take the uh, lens off. For another thing for cleaning, I just have a little brush. And on the other side, it has a little, little scrubby thing. This is basically just to keep dust and everything off my camera so whenever I do change a lens 
all that dust ain't falling right onto the camera. So anytime I change my lens out, I take my brush, clean off my camera, take the lens off, blow the sensor, and then put the lens on. And that system's been working really good for me so far. I carry a little lens cut, one's for the back, the actual cover of the camera on the sensor. The other one's for the back of one of the lenses, whichever one I'm not using at the time. For battery power, I will have all my batteries in this right here. This is the Hilltop Pack small dual battery bag. Battery bag. I will have two, no, three Sony batteries for my camera. I'll have four total, three extra, one in my camera. And I will have two extra GoPro batteries. So basically four camera batteries, three GoPro batteries. For charging my batteries, I have this little Telson three port charger for the GoPro. It's USB-C uh, charger. And I have a little RAV power dual charger for my Sony. And it can be used with Sony, uh, with a uh, USB-C or micro USB. To transfer my footage off my SD cards, I carry a little Apple Sony, a uh, little Apple SD to lightning transfer cable. I don't have my cards in there right now, but this, I don't carry an external, like a, a backup SSD or something like that. I just basically carry the SD cards and whenever I get home, like whenever I get to Virginia where I can switch out my gear, any cards that I've already used, I will leave here and then restock with new ones. That's just how I've been doing it. Eventually I will get a uh, a backup SSD but as of right now I'm just winging it like this but this is a waterproof shockproof case by Pelican and I have a bunch of stickers on there and it can hold a bunch of SD and micro SD and that's basically it for my camera gear um, it's a lot of stuff of course it's heavy but it's worth it to me so this is my my luxury <laughs> it's just a really really heavy luxury. how do i edit on trail for photos i use a uh, lightroom mobile it works pretty good it don't work as good as the web version but i can i can do what i need to do on it and for video i use an app called luma fusion it's not it's not a free app you have to pay for it but it's just a one one time thing. The good thing about it, you can adjust your audio levels, you can color grade, you can stabilize your video, you can do all kinds of stuff. It's basically a mobile version of Premiere Pro in a way. And to an extent. Not exactly, but it works extremely, extremely well. And I don't have it out here, but my only other camera kind of related stuff is my, my phone. I got an iPhone 12. I had to finally upgrade from my iPhone 8 Plus where I lost it on the Art Lobe Trail. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically all the camera gear I will be taking with me on the trail. I'll go over any other things electronic wise in the next video. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a like, subscribe, comment, share, all that good stuff. It really helps out the channel. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. And as always, hope you all had a great day. Have an even better night. And I will talk to y'all on the next one.